Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to show you how to spice and up your own custom servers with loot events where you can spawn in your own hackable crates, adjust the timers without restarting your server, and yes, even spawning in your own elite crates anywhere, anytime. We'll show you how to do all of these and maintenance for all of this to make your custom server even better for Rust Console Edition for the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, Next Generations, and everything in between. Okay, so here's a prereq. Uh, you do need to have admin access minimum or ownership. Ownership's above admin access uh, for the more advanced features, but for the most part, you can do all of this with admin access as far as spawning these in and doing maintenance. Although it is recommended you do have ownership. Also, not required, but really I'm suggesting that you do this. Have a legitimate keyboard plugged into your console, PlayStation or Xbox. It just helps with the typing because these are very, very wordy. Um, syntax so uh, it's just gonna help with your sanity all, all together let me just show you for, for for example all right so the hackable crate is you guessed it well actually okay pause rewind uh, so we're gonna bring up the admin panel go to open command list panel go to the enter custom command at the bottom it's X for us on the Xbox and I believe it's square on the PlayStation so the hackable crate is you guessed it hackable crate that's one short name right that's still pretty long Here's the big one, ready? The other one is, and this all does the same thing. Is it code? I always laugh at how code locked hackable. <laughs> I have to say it out loud. That is a mile long. So the two short names, I know. Code lock, code locked, hackable crate, and then hackable crate are all one and the same. So you can use them all at the same time. So um, not the same time, but you can use them interchangeably. So what you can do is you type in spawn, and then here's the long name, long short name, and then if we hit enter, you'll notice that all of a sudden, it just spawns in the center of the map. You can see right there it says zero, zero, and then you're like, well, what does that do? Well, the problem with that is with these guys, and we'll show you how to do the maintenance on this here in a little bit or later, um, the problem is it falls under the kill barrier because there's nothing to catch it. So it, it just falls and then it shows this on the map and it's very confusing to the players. Again, we'll show you how to clean this up. So you want to always be very, very careful about how you're typing in the syntax for this because if anything is incorrect, it automatically spawns at the origin, zero, zero. And yeah, it just becomes a problem. And then when you do clean this up, once they've fallen under the map, you do sweep up all of the other crates at the same time. Uh, yes, they'll spawn back in the monuments, but it can cause a bit of disruption if you're playing on a very active server. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's show you how to spawn this bad boy in. All right, so you find a spot where you'd like to spawn it in. Uh, Mr. Attack Helicopter is awesome. Love him. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand. Uh, by the way, these always spawn in north. We're not going to mess with rotation this time. Uh, so you go to the command panel, open up your custom command, and you're going to type in print position. P-R-I-N-T-P-O-S. And then when you hit enter, that's your X, Y, Z that you need. That's exactly where you're standing. Less the rotation. If you don't put in rotation, it automatically puts you at north. So we're going to say spawn. We're going to use the short one for our sanity. Hackable <laughs> crate. And then it's going to be X, Y, and Z. So this is the syntax, right? I'm actually going to hit uh, Control-C. By the way, a little side tip here. When you're on a keyboard, you can hit the end, hold Shift, and then uh, while you're holding Shift, go to End, or I'm sorry, Home, <laughs> and then hit Control-C, and then that way you can Control-V, which is paste into this text field later on. So standard Windows stuff, right? Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and type in our command that we have there in the lower left-hand corner in the dimmed screen. We have 156. Dot eight comma no space. It's very very particular. Thirty three dot zero comma no space. Uh, negative no space one zero zero seven dot zero. And here's another trick. Uh, whenever I type these in because it's so tedious, I will get to the end of the line, hold shift, hit home, control C to copy in case we need to come back and make a correction. So if we did this correctly, which I think we did. Or I didn't. All right, a good example, right? Let's go and see if I messed this up real bad. This is perfect. This is perfect, actually, that I messed up. Um, I'm sorry. Let's go back to the command, go to console log. What did I type in incorrectly? So I had 156.833. Ooh, I did negative 2,000. See what I mean? All right, well, we have a rogue crate, which is fine. This is actually works perfect for our example. So let's go back here and go to the command list, enter custom command. As we said before, remember what we have in the uh, clipboard. Now uh, we can just hit Control-V to paste that back in and make the adjustment. Don't know why I did that. 
and then we're going to copy this next command and it should be right on top of us or close to it because we did just move. Now you can see here there's an ID number that 20999930 and then it shows you the coordinates x, y, and z where it did spawn. So that's very nice. But here, check this out. So if we were to do the same thing again and we were to just put a space somewhere, so we're going to take the same command and just say, watch, even putting a space right here, watch what it does, automatically goes to zero, zero again. So you're like, what? So we'll show you how to clean that up. Uh, well, after we do the crates, um, the elite crates. So if you want to spawn one of these guys in, we'll show you our example over here real fast again. If you wanted to do something like this, this is actually one of the examples we did uh, live on my custom server. By the way, if you want to jump on my custom server, there's no admin abuse there whatsoever. We do clean up the cheaters. We have loot events like this. And uh, all you have to do is search Jade in the custom servers. That's when Rust works actually works. Haha. <laughs> and then sort by fullest servers. You'll find us. We are the top two. Uh, just follow the uh, the pattern there at the top. There's a couple copycats. Just be advised. Uh, it's just really confusing for other people. I only have two active servers at the moment. So again, search Jade and just sort by fullest servers. We should be at the top of the list. Anyways, I digress. Uh, this came from, specifically, we did a loot event just like this where we created this miniature base where there were two crates and I activated one of these. Right, and then threw a bunch of airdrops, and then we had a crate on top, so people had to come over here. Well, they were attracted by the airdrops. I announced it in chat, but they came over to the airdrops. But then uh, everything's kind of marked on the map. See how we have crates all over the place? And then the airdrops pulled people in, so people would have to figure out how to raid this. Also, why other people were converging on the location. One of these crates would pop open but before they got there, and then they'd have to activate this one, causing uh, chaos. If you'd like to see that video, I'll go ahead and link that now in the upper right-hand corner. It is literally from my custom server, and this is the example. Uh, this is what I did to prepare for that loot event. It was actually a lot of fun. So we do stuff like that all the time. Okay, so let me show you how to do these loot crates, elite loot crates. So let's just stand here and say we want it here. We'll face north. We'll do what we did prior. We'll open the command list panel, enter a custom command, and say print position. And yes, even though you have a keyboard, you still have to hit your controller to do things, which it makes sense. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. If I am, please let me know in the comments. I will try to answer everything that I possibly can so it's not confusing. All right, so check it out. Whoops, I really can't spell or read. I'm the worst, dude. All right, so this is how it works. Spawn and then crate. Let's hopefully I got this right. And it's just like this. So just as prior, if you were to just hit enter here, it would go to the center of the map, which this one's easier to clean up because it doesn't fall with gravity. It actually just stays on that surface of the water at the origin. We'll show you here in a second. There's actually a really cool trick for this that we just figured out. But uh, it's the same setup as before. It's X, Y, and Z, just like this very particular about its coordinates and you saw what happened earlier when I typed them in incorrectly that was not a desirable effect and we'll show you how to clean this up too and it is more aggressive but sometimes you have to do it because you lose one under the map well in this case I think we have like five under the map right now so these are our coordinates if I spawn this incorrectly it should land right at my feet I'm not terribly worried about this one like I said because it doesn't fall and what's really cool is you can keep stacking these um, on top of each other. Just stand here and get another print position. Just like this. If you wanted to. And then you type in the command in the same fashion. Now, if you have some of these out here and you're like, man, that's not what I wanted right now, that's totally fine. Look at the object. Go to the command list. Hit X. Uh, square on PlayStation, I believe. ENT space K-I-L-L. -L, and that will delete whatever your cursor is looking at. And we can do the same thing with crates. When you can see them, when you can see them, the being the key and operative word. All right, so let me show you something. Now, I don't remember how I did this in the center, so we may, I may be doing this a little backwards. And there's a trick to this. We're going to show you two different ways to clean this up. And it's very important to kind of see how all of this operates because this isn't typical. So here's what's happening. It'll spawn here. And then since there's nothing under it, because typically there's not an elite crate sitting right there, it will fall until it hits way past the kill barrier, which means it's inaccessible. Let me show you. So this is actually a perfect example. So when you spawn this in without an elite crate, let's go ahead and do what we did before. Let's say ENT. All right, so we have more than one in the spot, which is, oops, I got to hit custom command. Now watch, see how they're falling? That's what happens when they spawn on the origin. So if you go on the map, there's no way to get to them because they spawn past even for the admin to get to you. 
So we'll show you a command to uh, clean these up. But we'll also show you another trick to kind of catch them like we did back there. All right, so just to kind of show you how that works and why that falls down. So this one's very aggressive, but it's important to know how to do this. It is a bit lengthy, but um, if you lose these crates and they're like just very unruly, this is how you clean them up, all of them. So if you have crates in the center of the map, you don't know how to get to them, here's what you do. All right, so open the command list again, X, and then let's, hopefully I get this right, entity, find underscore entity, and I think we type in the short name, if I'm not mistaken. I keep like second guessing how all of these work, so if I type these in incorrectly the first time, I apologize. So what this is going to do is this is going to return a list of entity IDs for hackable crates only. So there's a ton. Here's the weird thing. This command I don't think is firing correctly, which is, it's okay. So if you look at the CL and then there's a semicolon, then there's a number like, uh, if we're looking at the bottom of the list, CL semicolon 2101120 semicolon. We're going to just write that down real fast. That's an ID number. Technically, we should be able to hone in on just one of these, but when we type in an ID number to erase these, it gets all of them. So just be advised. It is going to disrupt your map because this is all hackable crates, ones that respond in by the Chinook, ones that are sitting on oil rigs. So just be careful with this one. This is like a last resort, but we'll show you a cool way to clean this up, another way to like catch them as we did earlier. Man, that attack helicopter is killing me. Okay, so now what we're gonna <laughs> Now what we're going to do, we're going to type in entity.delete. Entity, yes, there's two E's like that next to each other. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in hackable crate. I'm going to go ahead and save it like this. And what we're looking at now is an ID number for the, uh, the crate, the entity ID number. So what's crazy is when we type this in, like I said, it should just grab this ID, but it grabs all hackable crates, which is super annoying. So you know we have one in front of us to the side, one over on the wooden stand, and one in the center map. Actually, let me just go ahead and show you this right now. So if you look on the map, we have a ton right here. This is our example area, and then we have some at the origin. Watch, this is going to clean up all of them. And I think we have some on the oil rig as well. I just think it's really important. Yes, we do. All over the place. And on the cargo ship. So watch, when I pull this command, all of these are going to disappear, like, instantly. So we're going to go back. I just want to make sure you saw that first. So we're going to po post, paste that in, and we're going to take that ID number we had earlier, which was 2101120. Now, it's going to grab all of them. Hopefully they fix this in the future, but just know it's going to delete all of them. So it says it's erased 14 hackable crates. You saw the ones in front of us disappear. The ones on the cargo ship are gone. <laughs> Oil rig, gone. Small oil rig was around here somewhere, I think. Gone. Uh, the one in the center of the map, gone. Okay, so how do you fix this? Yes, the other monuments will spawn them back in eventually, or you can trigger those events to come back. Here's a great trick to get or catch any um, mistyped hackable crates, because it's going to happen eventually, right? So since our friend here, the elite crate, doesn't fall with gravity, and I found this out completely by accident, you just type in spawn crate underscore elite, no parameters, and it should go to the origin of the map. So instead of it free falling, I think it's roughly here, it sits on the surface. What's beautiful is this acts as a catch. Did I hit it in the wrong spot? There it is. This acts as a catch for everything else. So what's really cool is you can actually put a couple of these on top of each other. So I'm going to do just that. So in case you delete one by accident, right? Um, crate, whoops, elite. All right, so it's spawning another one right here. So check it out. If we accidentally spawn in a hackable crate, man, I really can't spell. Hackable crate, and let's say we messed up real bad, like I put 12, space, negative, five, one, you know, uh, like that. It's going to spawn at the origin. Do you see how it just popped in right there? And it saves it. So technically what you can do is if you have a bunch of these errors, because like I said, it's if you're doing a lot of these events, you're going to eventually mess up and drop one under the map. And it's just, it's very disruptive. And to clean it up is also very disruptive. So this is, I think, a great compromise. So you see how we have, oh, that really shot up, didn't it? So what's cool is if you have a couple of these crates, all you have to do to clean it up is go to the origin here. So you can see it on the map now. 
So instead of doing that very disruptive, destructive operation to delete all hackable crates, since you have these elite crates floating here, just come over here and do what you would do. Whoops, I'm going real fast, sorry. Do what you would do with any uh, entity that's unwanted. You would go here, custom command, ENT space. See how it's, it's deleting itself? We're good to go. You don't have to do the very abrupt, abrasive. See, it's a nice compromise. So essentially what I'm saying is spawn one or two of these elite crates with no parameters to the center of your map. It's going to help you. Uh, but if you don't, you can use those other commands to really get you on track. Now, if you're out here going, that's cool and all, but like, how do I get these uh, crates to, uh, to have different times? Because 15 minutes maybe is too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to spawn another hackable crate right about here. I probably should have copied and pasted this. I wasn't thinking. Right where I'm standing. Let's go ahead and do it again. This is a good example of how to do all of this. Print position. Can't spell. Can't type. Puh. <laughs> hackable crate. 152. I told you it was lengthy. But it's worth it though. Like These are so much fun. We had a blast doing it, throwing a bunch of airdrops, and but also uh, another nice little caveat, a little uh, warning. If you have like a pretty standard server, be careful spawning too many of these. It's going to really disrupt the economy, and you know that's okay if you boost it a little bit. But like if you do it too much, it can be very lopsided, and you know it might draw away some people. People always complain to some degree, but you want to make sure that you've got some kind of uh, balance. Uh, whatever the experience is that you want, make sure you're focused on that and make sure that spawning too much loot is not going to destroy it. That's essentially what I'm saying. Okay, so standard time to hack is 15 minutes. So we're going to do one more just right here to show you the time. So that's 15 minutes. I'm going to do another one of these right here. And plus this keyboard is not my standard keyboard. So I, not only am I bad at typing, but this ain't helping. Hackable crate, 149. I told you, a keyboard is like, it's key, man, I'm telling you. You want it. Negative 100. Uh, dot 2. Let me go ahead and copy that in case I mess this up real bad. And we have our elite crate in the center of the map protecting us. So uh, one of the things I know you can do in G Portal is you can adjust the hackable time. But the problem with that is when you save it, it'll restart the server and it's even if we didn't have team issues and team issues <laughs> like team issues and like party issues or whatever it, it's it, it's always disruptive to have the server restart if you, and when you have an active population so ideally you want to have this happening while it's running so to do that what you can do is I mean if this is a long one too hopefully I get this one right this one's wild hack hackable locked <laughs> Great. That's is how it starts. Dot. Required. Hack. Seconds. Uh, yeah, copy. Uh, yeah, please. That's such a crazy <laughs> line. Go to the end. Shift. While you're holding shift, hit home. Control C to copy. In case I type this wrong. Okay, so that is the command, believe it or not. And it's showing you the default time. That's in seconds. So that adds up to be 15 minutes. So let's say you wanted to take that in half. Easy. You go back to your custom command, you hit control V because we're smart, and now you can type in a command. We'll cut that in half. 450 seconds. Now that we did that, watch. We have a timer that's active now that's already ticked down. Boom! It's at five and a half minutes. Watch. When we hit this one, it's going to do six and a half. Is that right? Seven and a half. Seven and a half? Seven and a half. Wow, I'm bad at math. There you go. That's how you change that default timer, which makes it a lot more fun. I would suggest maybe taking around like 10 minutes-ish if you wanted to. But again, create whatever experience you would like to. It's going to make it super awesome. All right, I think we have... Here's another one, too. If you have a very large activity happening, you have a lot of core systems on your server, you can decrease the corpse um, despawn timer, or I should say reduce it, so it uh, despawns faster. Let me go ahead and show you that command, because that can also be a big performance hit. Um, and I found this one. This isn't on the standard setup, but it does work. Let me see. I hope I get this one right. Hopefully, this all makes sense. Um, despawn. All right, I think that's right. Server dot corpse despawn. And if you just type it out, it shows you what the standard is. That's 300 seconds. So if you wanted to cut that in half, you can make it 150. So that way, because you know how like when bodies really pile up in game, it can really be a performance hit. 
this can help, especially if you've got a lot of people coming in one area and you've got some core systems because they it suffers. Like if you've ever seen us do like loot events on the standard official servers, you know what we're talking about. It gets pretty rough. So you can put it at 150 if you wanted to. Corpse despawn. So that'll help with performance as well. I think we have, oh yeah, one more thing too if you wanted to spice up some of your uh, events, right? So if you do have the cargo ship out, you can adjust how many loot rounds it does. does. By standard, it's three, right? And then the horn blows for each. What's cool is you can increase that. Did you know that? So you can type in cargo, cargo ships, loot rounds I think I have that right so if you just type this in I should tell you how many it has standard is three so again if you're spawning these in to spice some things up or it's wipe day these are really fun to kind of boost a little bit so you could take it up to five if you wanted to awesome so the next time the cargo ship comes in it's gonna have five uh, hackable crates that spawn on board which is fantastic and yes you can even configure your server to have Recyclers spawn on the cargo ship, among other places, if you would like to. So if you'd like to know how to do that, we should already have the custom recycler spawn guide up on the end screen now. And hopefully we get to see you do this on your server, but also you guys get to pop in on our server during our live streams and our loot events. And uh, good luck to you, and hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Love you. Bye.